Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what I'm going to do today with my presentation is talk about what we call the lattice energy converter. I've given several presentations on this in the past, so I plan to break my part up into two parts. Uh, initially, I'm going to talk about the evolution of the LEC. You know, we didn't set out to do this, we followed the experiments. We've had replications by Antonio De Stefano in Sicily. He will be presenting his results virtually. And John Paul Barbarian, who is here with us today, following their presentations, then I will come back and we'll talk about what we need to do to scale up the LEC output. Like I said, we didn't start out saying, I think let's build a lattice energy converter. On the left, you see the lab rat test cell that, that we started with all constructed out of pipe that you can buy at your Home Depot or any hardware store. We had a palladium coated, or actually a copper coated with palladium uh, coated positive uh, working electrode. The outer pipe was a brass uh, pipe nipple. We had an nylon bushing on top to provide insulation. And we applied power, external power, to, to the outer electrode through a current limiting resistor for safety reasons, and our instrumentation was then hooked up also to the, the working electrode. We knew that you can't conduct current through a gas unless there are ions present. So in the bottom of the cell, you see we put two microcurie sources of americium-241. We stole them from an ionization smoke detector. We hooked it up, and it worked. It worked great. In fact, it worked too great. When we calculated and analyzed the results, we were conducting six times more current than what the ions produced by the americium would have supported, even if they each alpha particle integrated or produced 10 to the fifth additional ions. So we removed the americium 241, it still conducted. We put a blank working electrode in and we didn't measure anything. The conclusion was that something in the working electrode, the palladium hydrogen, was ionizing the gas. That was one surprise. Here's another surprise discovery. We were concerned that perhaps uh, water vapor, which has ions, was part of the con uh, contributing to the ionization and the conduction. So we packed a cell in dry ice, took it down to minus 55 degrees Celsius, this, so that this would freeze out any water vapor. And then we, we did a test where we were applying the potential, re, we reduced the potential, and measured the current. And you can see there, and it went down and everything was fine until we got down to about 28 volts, and then it turned south. And we thought, well, that's just an instrumentation artifact. We thought that for a few weeks. Finally, we decided, wait a minute, you know, all we have to do to test that is to unplug the power supply, unplug the, the computer instrumentation system we had, and hook up a voltmeter. And when we did that, we were still conducting a voltage and current. And we went to the books and discovered that yes, in 1932, Darrow had, had discovered or published the results that said this is possible. We were dealing with a lot of surprises, so I think it's appropriate to mention a quote from the casebook of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle. When you have eliminated all of which is impossible, then whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. And we have followed where our experiments were leading us, and we've traveled from the impo improbable to the reality of what we now call the lattice energy converter. The LEC has demonstrated the ability to spontaneously self-initiate and self-sustain the production of a voltage and current through an electrical load. These results are repeatable. Repeatable is in quotes because the phenomena repeats, but no two experiments seem to do exactly the same thing. Both palladium hydride and iron hydride have demonstrated these results. Uh, we have two peer-reviewed papers that have been published. Uh, multiple people have independently replicated the results. We're going to hear from two of them today. Uh, naturally, radioactive materials are not required. 
And although LEC output power is only a few microwatts, uh, there are multiple options for scaling up that have been identified, and we'll talk about those when I come back. They say seeing is believing. And so I prepared a video, and, and what we're going to see here is a, a one-minute clip from a video that's about five minutes long altogether that's available at the, at the link there, and it's also we're displaying it at our table. Uh, this shows a LEC being assembled and the spontaneous voltage produced. They're supposed to be... Okay, there's supposed to be voice here, but I'll talk. Okay, there's the working electrode. All right. It's into a couple here, which is connected to this pipe here, which is epoxy into the back of this fitting. So it has electrical isolation between the fitting and the working electrode. The counter electrode pipe, you can see it's empty. I'm just going to screw it in. And I'm going to connect the red lead from the voltmeter to the working electrode and the black lead from the voltmeter to the counter electrode. And you see, when we do that, we're measuring almost 700 millivolts, 7 tenths of a volt. Okay, like I say, you can see the load test and, and other things out, out in the in display area. Uh, we've had two independent replications that I'm going to refer to here. Antonio De Stefano, a scientist in, in Sicily, he became aware of the LEC because of the discussion on the LENR forum. He, and he performed multiple tests to eliminate uh, other causes. I, I, he did outstanding work and he's going to cover some of that in his presentation. The second person is well known to us, Jean-Paul Babirian. He was the first to replicate. I can't, you know, if, if you're looking for someone to replicate your results, you call someone like Jean-Paul because if he does it, it's believable. And, and he's replicated and he's going to talk about what he has done. So at this point, I'd ask that we please welcome Antonio De Stefano, who's pre presenting virtually from Sicily, where it's late at night or early in the morning. <laughs> 